Well, he's back again. This old sword here. And what has he got? Another button knife? Going crazy with autos these days, isn't he? Well, if you watched carefully, you've seen this one before. And I uh, profiled it in a review of a group of Hogue knives, sort of overviewing the brand and what was available. So here we have a SIG built by Hogue. And it is the EXA04. I had a look. Got too many of them. A very interesting grind on the blade, a design by Alan Elishowitz. And uh, he's done this for a number of their manual knives as well. It's interesting because you have a hollow in the middle, a flat at the top, and what appears to be a hollow for your primary bevel, and then uh, a nearly mirror edge for the secondary, which is unusual to see on a factory knife, but it's um, wicked shop, as they say. Pretty good edge. I don't think I'm going to touch that one. So it is an auto. The handle is G10, unlike many of the other Hogue autos, which have aluminum handles. And um, that was one of the reasons I was attracted to it. I just like G10 so much better than um, aluminum with a coat on it which tends to wear off pretty quickly. Uh, this is black G10 through and through. And we have a really nice checkering, actual gun stock checkering on this side of the uh, knife, the show side. It is um, got the SIG emblem in the middle. And that emblem, I believe, is an inset. I'm pretty sure it's a metal. It feels cooler to the touch than the surrounding G10. Um, but could be an aluminum, something along those lines. You can see next to the button lock next to the uh, actuation button. We have a lock. That will lock it out in the open position and it will lock it out in the closed position. So just in case you wanted a little safety there, you've got it. Because what they've done is put the clip on the pivot side. And I know a lot of people don't like that. Uh, making an exception in this case for Hogue in that um, they really didn't have the real estate on this tapered butt end of the knife to successfully put a clip and give you a lanyard hole is my guess. Not to mention when you pull it out of the pocket your finger is already near the actuation button. And it's very snappy. I'd say um, close to Protec snappy for those of you Protec uh, knife aficionados. We have a nice black, I don't think it's DLC. I think it's another type of coating that Hogue is using. They've got their own brand name, branding uh, for that coating. But it's actually gray. Hard to see that. But they had called, I got this at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, by the way. 
and uh, as a first time customer there I got a pretty decent little discount so that helped but it is a soft gray looks black but dark gray blade uh, finish blade coat it is a black G10 handle and ergonomically it is really nice you see how high the clip is raised that deep carry clip on the pivot side well your hand actually goes right into the hollow of that clip and I feel no hot spots at all zero hot spots got a little bit of um, handle sticking out on the other end it's not a huge knife I'll go over some of the specs which with you which I uh, managed to take ahead of time on my own so it's eight and a quarter inches overall length with a three and a half inch blade and a cutting edge somewhat less than that and I'm going to check myself on that three and a half inch blade. I'm relying on memory. I should have written it down, but said I wouldn't measure, but here we go again. It's a three and a half inch blade. Yep. Thick blade stock. It is four millimeters. Let's see if we can hold that in focus. Come on. Got it a little close, which is some of the problems sometimes. So we've got a blade stock that is four and a half millimeters. Tapers to a pretty fine point. Um, interesting design by Mr. Lishowitz on this. You have your worn cliff point, which is upswept. You have a defined belly in the very middle of the blade instead of more towards the end. And yeah, you've got that clip branded with Hogue, sort of discreetly. Doesn't jump out too much. You got your Sig Sauer, and this is made in the US by Hogue for Sig. There's your Hogue branding. So, you know, a fair amount of blade branding, but it's fairly discreet, other than perhaps the Sig Sauer. But you know, you make a knife for another company, and I think a lot of times what they want is to um, make sure their name is on it, right? Now, the width on the handle, thickness of the handle, is 0 0.60 inches. So you've got a swell right here. Um, part of the contouring that makes this knife feel so good in the hand is it's rare to see this contouring along the uh, thickness of the handle, the width of the handle. You got a definite palm swell there. Pretty much a closed back construction except for right up front here. And I think part of that is that you can flush that mechanism out. This is designed to be a law enforcement slash military knife, uh, having been made for SIG, which is a, um, an arms company. And uh, my theory is that if you close that up and you got some gunk in the mechanism there, mud, dirt, whatever, that you might not be able to get to it very easily without disassembly. And I'm not real big on disassembling autos. Maybe some of you are, but I'm certainly not. Uh, speaking of disassembly, there is your Torx right there to get at the pivot. And then we have one, two, three screws holding the handle together. As I said, a lanyard hole. And... Uh, I think I gave most of the specs. So as I say, four millimeter blade stock, pretty good hefty blade stock. You got a, no jimping at all on the top, but a very nice thumb indent ramp, if you want to call it that. You can choke up a little bit if you're careful. You just don't want to ram your finger into the edge of the blade there where it terminates and you have a sharpening choil. 
The grind I find again is uh, quite intriguing with the uh, kind of a tri grind there. And that's um, more or less like a big fuller. So this can be a stabby knife. This can be a certainly a cutting edge with the edge as sharp as it is out of the box. Speaking out of the box, you get a box, but uh, with the SIG branded ones, you get a nice um, pouch as well. Not quite as nice as like Wii or Best Tech or even Kubi, but you know, it's a nice little uh, place to keep your knife if that's where you keep it. Now for comparisons today, I have the Launch 13, which I reviewed recently. And you're going to see that the Launch 13 is pretty much the same overall length. But it is a skinnier knife, if you want to use that term. It's almost exactly the same length. Blade is almost exactly the same. They're both three and a half inch blades. And the handle is the same length. But top to bottom, we've got a lot more to hold on to here. And thickness wise, we've got a thicker handle on the uh, Hogue. Nice little knife, by the way. If you haven't already seen it, check out my review. It's the only Kershaw launch that I have, and it's probably the only one I would want to have. It's just that unusual. I do like, I don't know if it's the complexity or the overbuiltness of the Hogue Autos, but um, they just do such a nice job. It is very much a duty sort of a knife. Um, really feels and looks like it's meant to stand up to some use and abuse. Get back to that clip again. Certainly you can take it off and put it in a pouch. Not the pouch they gave you, but a belt pouch. You can drop it in your pocket, and if you're not too confident of it uh, not opening, you can always engage the lock there. Personally, I don't mind the clip. I think it's more of an aesthetic thing. We all like the clip on the butt end of the knife these days. It just somehow in our minds belongs there. And when you uh, put a clip up on the hinge side, you know, it might um, remind us of some of the cheaper knives where that's where they put the clip. And by the way, that is the only place the clip is going to go because it's built up there and those are the only screw holes that you've got. Unlike the um, K320 series where you have uh, four position. One thing I didn't mention if you hadn't seen it on the blade already, is that this is a 154 cm steel blade, not a CPM 154, which is the newer powder metallurgy type of 154, but this is the older original 154 cm, uh, which is what Hogue seems to like to make a lot of its knives out of. I've got a uh, DECA coming in, and they make that out of 20 CV, so that's sort of a change up, but it boosts the price a little bit as well. These come in um, probably around two. You'd have to check on that. And if you're not in an area where you can carry an auto knife, I know I'm not. I just simply collect them, carry them around the house and whatnot. I don't take the risk of bringing it out on the street, but then again, if you behave yourself, uh, nobody's the wiser, right? Give you another quick comparison. A knife that I feel this is going to stack up against pretty comparably size wise. The Griptilian. The Griptilian is just about a half inch longer overall, but pretty much same handle size, same handle thickness, pretty much, same handle height. Just different contouring and different ergonomics on the handle. 
So there you have the um, Pogue SIG A04, uh, EX A04, and the A is for auto because there is an EX04 as well, which is uh, both in a three and a half and a four inch version, as I recall, and it's a manual um, push button locking knife. They make a great plunge lock. If I didn't already show you, there is zero play. That feels like a fixed blade when it opens. And that's not bad for an auto, something that opens as easily as a button push. So got uh, one or two more um, auto reviews coming in. I got a special one, which is one I don't see too many reviews out there on. And I'll let that be a surprise, but that'll be coming up in a few days or so. For now, enjoy yourselves. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to give this a like and subscribe. This old sword signing out.